What a wonderful garden setting. But plants are not the only things that grow in gardens. Chemicals grow in gardens as well. Have a look at these two substances, common things that you've seen many times before. This one, sand, clean sand. You know you've seen this. Maybe you don't know that you've seen sodium carbonate, which is next to it. That's used in lots of different washing powders. Those are two of the ingredients for making glass. But sometimes when they're heated together, they form something else. This stuff, and it's called water glass. It's a kind of glass, but you can see it's a liquid. It's a syrupy, clear liquid, and it's in that that we're going to grow our chemical garden. What are we going to grow in it? I'm glad you asked. Not seeds nor seedlings, but we're going to grow chemicals. First of all, we'll need to do something with the water glass. I'm going to pour some of this into a, a clean jar uh, until it's about a third full. Sodium silicate used to be used quite a lot for preserving eggs. People would dip eggs in it and it would form a layer around them and prevent them from going bad. Now, about two-thirds water. So we've got water glass and water. We'll stir them around. You'll notice the mixing together, the water glass is actually dissolving in the water. Sometimes it's called soluble glass. There it is there. A nice solution of water glass in water. Now, here are the chemicals that we're going to grow in the water glass. They're all salts of metals. And the first one is a salt of iron, and then a salt of copper, a salt of manganese, a salt of nickel, and a salt of cobalt. You'll notice why I've chosen those five salts is because we have a nice range of colours. Maybe, maybe we'll get a nice range of coloured crystals growing. Here's what we do. We take some of each of them. We'll start with the salts of iron, and I'll drop some crystals into the water glass. A couple of small ones, and maybe some larger ones as well. And then we come up to the copper. Salts of copper, the nice bright blue ones, large and small. And you watch carefully what happens to those crystals. Then we come to the next one, manganese, this nice pink colour. And we drop a few crystals of manganese salts into our little garden. Now some of the salts are floating on the top, so I'll poke them with the stirring rod and make them sink to the bottom. And that brings us to the next one, which is nickel and we'll pick up some crystals of nickel, some large, some small, and drop those in there, the nice bright green ones. There we are. And already you may be seeing things happening in the bottom of our little garden. Poke the nickel salts and they'll fall down in among the others. One to go, and that's cobalt. And we have some large and small salts once again. Nice big one there, and now some smaller ones and then some at the back. And we've set up a chemical garden. Now, it'll take about 10 minutes for the whole thing to grow. This is not the sort of thing that you can do at home. The salts that I'm using are very poisonous, but you should be able to talk your teacher at school into getting hold of these chemicals and getting some water glass and setting it up for the whole class to watch. There it is there. We're going to watch it for about the next 10 minutes and see what happens to the little things that grow in our chemical garden. You and your teacher are going to have a lot of fun making a chemical garden. And when you've got to that stage, you haven't finished yet. You can keep it for a long time if you replace the water glass with water. And there are two different ways of doing that. Either you can very carefully tip out the water glass. Unfortunately, the fragile bits will break off and then replace it with clean water. And the colours will look even brighter. Or better still, you can take a tube and feed some water in slowly so that it gradually replaces the water glass and pushes it out over the top. And you get the same effect and keep a lot of the fragile bits. That's chemical gardening. Curiosity.